we know that early, consistent, and high quality CPR is going to save lives. And so that begs the question is that now that we have the option to use mechanical CPR devices, shouldn't they be saving more lives because of the ability to create more consistent, high quality CPR without even using a provider? Let's check out what the science says about it. that consistent high quality CPR is what truly saves lives in a cardiac arrest. It has gives us the best outcome for our patients to be able to create that environment for them. That being said, mechanical CPR devices are not proving to be as useful as we thought they were. In fact, when it comes to a, a practitioner standpoint they seem like a dream come true it frees up a set of hands it means that we have no practitioner fatigue it's much safer during EMS transport to a hospital as well however they're not approved by the AHA and in fact they're very very popular which begs the question why aren't they approved and why are they so popular well let's check out the science behind them to see why they're not approved at this moment and what studies are saying about the uses and the success of a mechanical CPR device. So far in the studies that have been done with mechanical CPR as opposed to traditional CPR has found that traditional CPR and mechanical CPR have almost kind of neck and neck on which one has the best outcomes. In fact, mechanical CPR is shown to have less neuro neurological outcome than traditional CPR. And in fact, there was a study of 80,000 patients. Okay? 80,000 patients and to determine which is better traditional CPR and mechanical CPR and what they found is that when it came to survival rates and the neurologically intact survival rates is that traditional CPR had a 9.5 percent chance of a intact survival rate uh, when it came to CPR. Now, what did mechanical CPR have? Well, in this particular study, it had a 5.6% chance of survival and neurologically intact. That's a big deal. That's a huge spread when it comes to an 80,000 person study when it came to cardiac arrest and neurologically intact survival rates. Now, it begs the question, why are we seeing such a, a change because when it comes to this, I mean, it should be the dream come true. It should be saving lives, but it doesn't seem to from this particular study and from most of the other studies that have been done. And why is that? Well, when it comes to this particular thing, what we're seeing is a lot of different problems. First off, time. Now we're seeing these these guys taking a lot of time to set up and get this thing on a patient. And we know that time is valuable for this patient. And so when we pause CPR, when we're not focusing on the cardiac arrest management and trying to get this mechanically CPR, CPR device set up, we're losing valuable time for this patient that's not being done during CPR. And so that is an important piece as to why we're seeing mechanical CPR devices not seeing the improvement is because of that particular thing. Another thing that we're we're seeing is that we're seeing physical injury. Okay, we're starting to see that these patients are having pulmonary contusions. They're having myocardial contusions due to the piston type of compressions that we're seeing. And so we're seeing myocardial and pulmonary contusions happening due to the piston type of mechanical CPR device. And so that's causing, again, another problem when it comes to neurologically intact ROSC or a patient survival. And so that's a big reason why we're not seeing improvement either and another big thing during transport even though it is safer for practitioners we're seeing that a lot of the time if the patient is not secured properly is that the patient will slide around on that stretcher meaning that we're actually not having good location um, driving that piston down it's not it's actually not driving down in the proper location because that patient often slides down on that stretcher which means that we're not compressing at the optimal location unless we're really paying attention on a consistent basis. So location 
was a big problem during transport when we saw that patient slide down and slide around on that stretcher when we're trying to you know drive quickly to a hospital in order to save this patient's life and so that is another reason they felt that a mechanically a driven CPR device is actually not seeing the improvements that we were expecting uh, because it really it seems like a great thing but truly the percentages are not showing it and they believe that these are the main reasons why we're not seeing the improvements in cardiac arrest survival with a mechanically driven CPR device. Now, just because we're seeing a decrease in survival rates in neurologically intact patients with the mechanically CPR device, doesn't mean that there isn't a place for it. In fact, the things that we're seeing that are actually limiting it are things like setup time, which we can improve during training. Things like uh, the, the fact that the piston is actually potentially causing myocardial and pulmonary contusions. Now that we are aware of this fault, we can start to improve the piston design in order to limit the chances of that happening. And finally, patients movement is something that now that we know is a problem with these mechanical CPR devices we can start to improve the design and improve the training so that way that doesn't occur which should in turn start to improve the survival rates and get it closer or even above the survival rates of traditionally done CPR but there still is a place even now for these type of mechanically uh, driven CPR devices and for the main one the reason that EMS has really adopted this is because of the fact that most EMS agencies have limited resources meaning that if I can strap on a mechanically driven CPR device and allow for me to s free a set of hands in the back of an ambulance so that way my partner can go and do transport while I'm managing the airway taking care of the breathing thinking about the reversible causes these are all things that I can do if I have a free set of hands that no longer longer has to do CPR and I can work more as a team. So in a limited resource situation, mechanical CPR devices are definitely indicated to allow for those long transports to be a little bit more cumbersome in a sense. Next thing is refractory V-fib. Now, if we know that this patient is going for a PCI and it's going to go for an angio and those types of things, and we have a refractory V-fib and we have a long transport, then we definitely want to be using a mechanically driven CPR device in order to give consistent CPR in order to get them to that situation, get the perfusion going as much as possible. So that way we have a better chance of survival for those patients. Or transport for organ donation. Now, this is something to where we know that this patient isn't going to survive, but their organs are still valuable, then using a mechanically driven CPR device to guarantee consistent perfusion and flow of blood during that cardiac arrest is going to absolutely allow for more viable organs during that time. So that is an indication for a mechanically driven CPR device. And of course, a transport for ECMO as well to continue maintaining perfusion for transport for ECMO in those types of situations, again, is a great um, indication for mechanical CPR device. So as we can see right now, the science isn't really matching up with the popularity of these mechanical CPR devices. There's some things that we still need to improve. Now there's things through training that we can improve and probably overcome traditional CPR percentages right now. But right now we're seeing the science saying that mechanical CPR devices just aren't leveling up to uh, traditional CPR unless there's a serious indication like we just talked about. So hopefully you guys are excited about this and are interested in the fact that mechanical CPR devices, as they develop, as they start to get better, we're gonna start to see really awesome things happen here with our patients, things that have never been possible until this very moment. So there is definitely an indication, there's definitely a place for them in EMS, and we're looking forward to the future to see see them save certain patients that definitely wouldn't be possible until this very moment. So hopefully you check out that interesting article on the GEMS magazine online here. You can do the link down in the below just to kind of read the article and kind of get a little bit more idea of what the science is saying right now about mechanically driven CPR devices. And that's the article right there that we took all of our resources from. So definitely check that out. We would love to see you uh, get engaged in this and let us know as well. Are you using mechanically driven CPR devices? What are you seeing as far as the outcomes in your patients are they better or are they worse or are they the same let's see what you're saying and what you're seeing as well talk to you next time